And now, it's time for Southern California's Sports Fishing Voice. Let's talk hookup. For the next two hours, join Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, Corey Sandin, and this week's special expert guest for fishing information, new techniques to catch more fish, and the most current scoop on what's happening in the water. Let's Talk Hookup is sponsored in part by Ford, the official truck of Let's Talk Hookup, and Shimano Rods and Reels, fish with the best. Shimano, get ready for the fastest two hours on radio with the hosts of Let's Talk Hookup, Pete Gray, Rock Cod Rick Maxa, and Corey Sandin. Good morning, anglers, and welcome to Let's Talk Hookup, man. We have a great show for you today. Pete is out of town on his way to the Loretto Rumble with our cast tours, Let's Talk Hookup group, and Steve Pinar. They're going to be having a great time down there, and man, do we have a fun show for you today. No Pete, it's Corey and I talking fun and talking fishing, and joining us in the studio, Brandon Bono from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, a great fishing bud of both of ours, and certainly an expert when it comes to fishing and fishing tackle and everything in between. It's going to be a great show, lots of great information. The fish are biting. You stay tuned. It's going to be a fun one. Let's Talk Hookup, Southern California Sport Fishing Voice on the Mightier 1090 ESPN Radio. You've heard all about it. You know the anglers catching fish have it. So what's holding you back? It's a fact. Fishdope.com really does help you catch more fish and burn less fuel. Fishdope.com is the only fish finding service with a spotter plane along with a crew of top anglers on the water almost every day that report actual locations and catches. You can get daily catch reports from Point Conception to San Martin Island 365 days a year. Fishdope.com is for everyone. Whether you have your own boat, fish on your friend's boat, or a sport boat, Fishdope.com has online planning tools, moon phase, tides, hot bite icons, and more. So bottom line is, if you don't have Fishdope.com, well, you're probably missing a lot of bites. Membership costs less than $50 of gas, and that's for the entire year. That's right, one year. What a bargain. Plus, use the special code to save $20 on a new Fishdope.com membership. Check it out today. Fishdope.com. Catch more fish, burn less fuel. The future comes standard at your San Diego County Ford dealers, so swing on by and check out the legendary Ford F-150, the smart and capable Ford Ranger, and the all-new Ford Bronco Sport. New inventory is arriving daily, and your San Diego County Ford dealer is here to help you build and order the truck or SUV of your dreams. Want to make sure you get the right truck to tow your boat? They'll help you order the right configuration to meet your needs. Want to make sure you get the right SUV to haul your gear on your next adventure? They've got you covered there, too. Escape, Edge, Bronco Sport, Explorer, and Expedition. They've got the SUV that's perfect for you. If it isn't on the lot, they'll order it and get you exactly what you need. They want your trade. So swing by your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer or visit buyfordnow.com to see all the great deals. They'll be glad to hook you up. All right, good morning. Welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. And I don't know how Pete arranged this, but... This is going to be a fun one today, Rick. It's one of my favorites. So Pete talked about it yesterday, and when he promoted that, uh, who our guest was, he referred to Brandon the way he always does as the world's greatest fisherman. And uh, <laughs> so Pete, uh, I know uh, Brandon has fished uh, with Pete on the boat before and cleaned his clock real good. And uh, and and after that trip, he d- he always dubbed Brandon as the world as world. He just refers to him as world's greatest every time he comes into the tackle store. And uh, and. I I know Corey Brandon's a good fishing bud of yours and certainly of mine too. And I'm, I'm with you. I, I didn't know how we pulled him off. Brandon's the only guy I know with zero social media, zero pump your chest. He'll go out and have the best day of fishing and you'd have to pry it out of him. Not one to, to be braggadocious at all, but fantastic at what he does. And uh, I was stoked that Pete got him to come on the air, but I didn't know how he pulled it off. I figured it had to be something you did. You and Brandon fish together a lot. And I figured, well, the two of you conspired because if Pete would ask me, you know, hey, you think Brandon's coming on? I'm like, uh, no way. You know, he's not. He's not on here. <laughs> I want to be clear on this. I, I was certainly <laughs> bullied into this by <laughs> strong arm, strong arm yeah. into it for sure by, oh. by by a man that I I admire and look up to. I've, I've listened to this radio show for you know more than half my life, and and always uh, always been a fan. I've never called in. I've certainly never been a guest. 
Uh, but I'm honored to be here. Yeah, well, no, it's an honor yeah, to, have to have you, here. buddy, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. And, you know, Brandon and I have worked in the tackle store together for a very long time. Brandon pretty much runs the show uh, in the evenings at the at the tackle store. You know, the, the shop is the shop is unique in that it's, you know, it's got two very uh, it's got two very different kind of lives. The the morning time when I'm there m- most commonly is long range. And, you know, it's the, the boats returning and it's, you know, it's super busy you know that way the shop takes on a different personality in the evening and that's kind of brandon's world brandon is the the one that is you know in charge of the tackle store in the evening time and it's a it's a unique place it's 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 just kind of it it's such a different atmosphere than a normal bait and tackle store would be because of the components of where of where it's located totally you know all day long from morning from open to close it's a it's a busy environment it's you know it's a lot of volume of people coming through the door the difference uh from mornings to evenings sometimes is is very noticeable because everybody's coming back from the trips in the mornings for the yeah. most part except for the you know the people leaving on long range trips and in the evenings uh it's all the guys getting ready to go on the overnight boats day and a half trips and all that so it's more of a a raucous party vibe. Yeah, you know? it is. Yeah. And we, I always say it's like it's in a, it's a palpable like electric feeling yeah. at the at the docks at in the evening time. I mean, it yeah. just is like you can feel it. Things, guys are jockeying for parking. The there's boats coming in. Everybody's so hyped to be going on their trip. It's a people are stoked to go fishing, <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and it's electric. You know, I've been I've been working there for closing in on 15 years. Not quite 15 years yet. Has but it been closing, 15 yeah. years? It's, it's closing in on that. Really? Yeah. yeah, and. Yeah. Uh, and I still enjoy it pretty yeah. much every evening, especially during the season when it gets good. It's a good time. Like yeah. I, it's a vibe. You know? It like is. We're, That's exactly we're, what it we're is. We're all, you know, though I don't get to partake in the in the beers and all these other <laughs> other things these guys are partaking in and just having a good time. I you feed off the energy of their excitement that they're going tuna fishing, and totally. I'm excited for them, and I'm excited to help them any way possible. And uh, it's good times. It is. It is, and you know, so many people rely on you know fisherman's landing as the spot where they're going to get it's a it's different things to different people's uh fisherman's landing can outfit a guy in you know in 12 a perfect example is what you did a couple days ago you outfitted an entire yacht for a guy that came up uh you know in a in a couple of days i mean it, it can be you know every hook and sinker and rod and reel for your sport fishing boat or or it can just be what the hot jig was the night before and everything in between those make no mistake we are the best in the game <laughs> best in the game all right uh, if anybody tells you different they're lying right to your face we're, uh, we're, uh, it, uh, oh, it's a good one it's uh it, it's very fun and one of the things you know we, we talk about that like you know the guy wants the hot jig that is a that is a very cool factor Come talk that lives I got it for you. at the land is that you know it's ground zero you know yeah, the boats totally. come in and the you know all, all of the guys yourself included you know very f- you know very good friends with the guys on the boats and you know the the trickle down is one of the fun parts about being there like the whatever it might be whether it's the trend or it's the right size of jig or style of jig or gear that's necessary like the the info kind of lands there first and it and it trickles out when the boats get back and it's a pretty cool spot to get to see it you know when and the you know the boats the a lot of the a lot of the boat guys rely on Brandon for help with their gear and and vice versa like just natural conversation happens and all of a sudden you know the word is that this this weight of colt sniper is really you know sure at nighttime it was wide open we caught this but when it was scratch fishing this lure rigged this way was the ticket and that's the kind of stuff you get from seeing a Brandon you know on at nighttime and not only do we get the information from passengers and crew members and captains and all that all the guys in the shop we all eat sleep and breathe this we all we all fish full speed and and super into this so it's very often that guys come in for a suggestion or something like that and the the kid that they're talking to was tuna fishing you know the the day previous or or the you know uh or is going tomorrow and has really good information for you people uh uh, buddies will ask me like hey what uh you know what what days off do you have and i always chuckle like for 25 years of working in the tackle store we don't have 
a set schedule. We we have like a I'll, I'll say I'm often off on Wednesdays and Saturdays, but like we don't we don't operate on a set schedule, and it's just for that reason. It, it's so that everyone can kind of cover the other guy when they're trying to go fishing. Hey, I got an opportunity to go fishing with my butt on Tuesday. Will you cover me on Thursday? Like the schedule floats around a lot, just because we we encourage our team to go and man. Do they go? You know? right? Yeah, and, they like it. And not only that, but the hours in the evening. I mean, you might be getting off at eight thirty one night and maybe eleven thirty the next. No doubt. Both yeah. leaving. Yeah, yeah, it's so. very very often that we get out of there very very late at, at random at random times for random reasons. Brandon fishes. I, I, it's another thing that I joke about. Brandon fishes more than any person that I know, uh, and absolutely. I know, and I know a lot of people that fish a lot. You know, but like we're talking a guy that goes fishing, doesn't you know, isn't at work where they do fishing stuff. I mean, like it, all the time at the lake before work, all the time. And Corey, you you know that oh, you yeah. you guys have spent a lot of days uh, on the freshwater side of things, and I don't. I don't like paying him compliments like this because he's one of my best friends, but uh, I, I will say it like I don't know many people that are as well rounded on the freshwater side as they are on the saltwater side. But it's a it's a compliment to to him because it's the truth. You're you're absolutely right. I mean, he goes deep into the geek with freshwater. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> just just to say it lightly, I yeah. mean, seriously, that w- w- without a joke. Your freshwater techniques and styles and what you dive into are. Definitely deeper than anybody I know. I mean, Why? that, and it might be the next day you're going out with Boog or you're going out with Taro <laughs> yeah. on a full day trip. Well, I appreciate that very much. And that's one of the, that's one of the upsides of being into all things fishing, being obsessed with all yeah. things fishing. I don't care. And you, you both are the same way. Like yeah. I know you both very, very well. I fish with both of you lots and lots and lots over, over the years. But it doesn't matter if I'm trout fishing in a little spring creek. It doesn't matter if I'm bluegill fishing at a pond. It doesn't matter or if, if it's I'm some killer bat- crappie bite, or or I'm yeah. casting poppers at 200 pound tuna. Yeah. You know, like I, I am into all of it, and because of that, I fish January to December, a couple of days a week. Uh, it's it's always been that way. It will hopefully, God, you know, God willing, I, I, it continues to be that way. And uh, and yeah, I just I just love it as I did when I was a kid. I, I love it now that I'm a an older man. When you like doing everything, there isn't an off season because you know, the off season of tuna fishing just means the start of whatever this and whatever that is. You know, you know. know I'm thinking about it, but I think my very first Picachos adventure was with you. Yeah, I yeah. think we had heard about it from Boog yep. and. Like next week we're down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like that kind of book. <laughs> hey, you want right? to go do that? Yeah, I want to do that. Let's, Let's go. I, I remember that phone call well because yeah. you called me just fired up, like phone, and with this with this idea, just you and I. Let's hop on a plane. Let's go next week, or maybe it wasn't next week, but, but it was. But it was it was it was a very short, similar. It was a very short time frame. We did yeah. not plan this out for, and I was down. Right, okay, let's go. You know, and we, <laughs> yeah, I'm going for a good time. We went and just had, and, and we had a couple of buddies come along with us. I, I believe, if I remember correctly, yeah. And, and we just had the most fun time. Just such a blast. Uh, it was uh, it was a hell of an experience. And uh, and yeah, uh, I just love that place. It, yeah. It's a special place. It, but those are the adventures. I mean, that that's the, no question. The, the definite good time. Yeah. You know? I, I was just telling you guys right right before the show started. I, I was working in the shop last night. A customer came in and he was explaining to me that uh, you know he's he's going up north uh, in two days to go uh, to Catalina and fish with bites, sport fishing. And, uh, and and to fish white sea bass, and he wanted to know if I would go with him. Well, I, I work those days. I can't, you know. And and just to Rick's point, I made one phone call, asked a guy, like, is there any chance you would cover these shifts for me? Are you are you going fishing? He asked me. Yes, I am. Like, then I'm down. Yeah, and I'll he, cover he you. Switched, and and now I'm going to Catalina for white sea bass fishing. It's <laughs> How tomorrow. Cool is that? Yeah, but, but yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow we leave. Yeah. And there's a couple of fish biting too. Yeah, on that's top what I hear. You know, I, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's great. We love it. So I, I just want to reiterate, you know, again, uh, if if it's questions you seek with tackle, this is a guy that I call. You know what I mean? So it's gonna be yeah. fun. We're gonna we're gonna have a great show, and there's a lot to cover. And you know, when you were giving uh, all those things that you like to do, you'd mentioned trout fishing. Going to be a great show today. Lots to cover, including trout fishing. Yesterday being the opening day of the Sierra season, they call it such a huge day. Yeah, they it? call it Fishmas, and uh, it, the stars align. It was yeah. beautiful up there. Uh, 
you know, it was 75 degrees. It was perfect weather. I'm sure there was biting fish. So we're going to get a couple of reports throughout the show um, on how that was. I know Bart Hall was up there as he always is. Bart's a big Sierra's guy. And, you know, we'll look forward to hearing, uh, hearing a little bit of that. I, I think Rick, I, in years past, there's been almost like blizzard conditions at times, like, like leading up to the opener, right? Yeah. Yeah. This was, this was a cool, and, and there's just been, they, they were just due, they were due for this day between COVID, between wildfires, between all of the other things that they have dealt with this year was just epic and beautiful weather and great fishing. And that is just a, that's another one of those really, really cool spots to just go and be. And it's such the cliche, dumb thing to say. We're like the fishing, you know, on a fishing trip, the fishing is the, you know, is the lesser important part, but it kind of is up there. Like just being up in that zone in mammoth and the big trees and the water and everything else, like it puts you in such a good spot. And then there's rad fishing to go along with it. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Huh? It's pretty cool. Well, we've definitely got a great show today, Corey, lots of cool, fun stuff to cover. We really do. And, and having, uh, like we mentioned earlier, having Brandon in studio is really a treat and, and, I don't know how Pete pulled it off, but he did. And he's going to be in studio for the next two hours. You want to join us, uh, telephone number is 213-432-1090. That's a telephone number. Or you can text us via the app. It's a, a free download. Just go onto the app there and, and hit text the show and send us a question if you have something for Brandon or, you know, doing a white sea bass fishing, all this freshwater fishing and everything going on today. Again, the telephone number, 213-432-1090. We are giving away one killer prize today. I wish I was in the winning for this. But a, a pair of Costa sunglasses. Not only is it just a pair, but you get a certificate for up to $300 off their site. So you could pick a, a lesser pair in the you know, $200 range and, and pick out maybe a tech shirt or something else to go with it. So $300, you go on their website and uh, get to choose what you want, right? I, I know you're a big Costa guy. And I dig them. We do so much big, you know, Costa glasses in the shop. Do you have a favorite? Uh, as far as lens or, yeah. or frame, well, I guess. both, I guess. When it comes to frame, lens was what I was thinking, but yeah, both. When it comes to frame, it's whatever fits your face, you know. The but but the lens for sure is the 580 glass lens. Uh, I I do I do own both the 580 glass and the 580 polycarbonate, and uh, and I and I I prefer the glass okay. when you're on the water at least. Polycarbonate is polycarbonate's nice in two ways. It's lesser expensive. Great. It's and it's super light. It's light which, on your face, yeah. which those are both great things. How are you ever going to deny that? Glass, however, again, a little more weight. And I, I'm not a tech guy. I couldn't tell you if there is an actual advantage in terms of looking through them or what it provides for you. What I do know, though, is the scratch resistance that you get out of glass versus plastic. They'll tell you with a, with a you know, with, well, I mean, obviously a sunglass person will tell you any high-end pair of sunglasses, you should always be cleaning that thing with some kind of solution and a microfiber cloth. We're fishermen. That that ain't ever gonna happen it just ever. Isn't. At the best, you lick your finger before you wipe it with your salty t shirt that's gotten yeah. spray from all your casts and all your trips to the bait tank. And glass isn't gonna scratch it in those doesn't. kind of conditions. You know, we're we're poly might. You know, you get a grain of salt in the wrong spot and you smash it in with your t shirt and you rub it around. You you can get some, you know, light scratching out of that where glass you're you're not going to. So I'm 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 with you. I'm a I'm a glass guy. What about lens color? Lens color, because uh, uh, a lot of options. A lot of options, and it's another thing. I do have several pairs of Costas in, in different lens colors. I like like today. It's a very cloudy, gloomy day. I have an amber lens that brightens up the sky, and I, I really like that on a cloudy, gloomy day. I also have like a yellow lens. Yeah, the sunrise yellow. The sunrise yellow, and I, and I use that when I'm sight fishing. Like if I was bass fishing and I'm sight fishing, I got to look at something. That sunrise yellow is great. I also use those as my shooting glasses. If I go to the gun range, right. those are my shooting glasses. But on a day to day basis, it's it's the it's the gray lens. Neutral it's gray. The, the neutral gray yeah. lens. It's 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 the best for everyday use, in my opinion. I'm saying. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. somebody's well, gonna it. have their. Uh, their chance to pick a pair out up to three hundred dollars again with Costa sunglasses. We're going to be right back. More from Brandon. The Fisherman's Landing Tackle. It's so odd for me to say it, but Brandon <laughs> Bono, Fisherman's Tackle. When we return on the Let's Talk Like a Bath, the Mightier Ten Ninety ESPN Radio. Hey everybody, this is Captain Dwayne Diego, Four Pack Charter Captain, here to talk to you about Parker Boats and the good folks at West Coast Marine. When it came time to start Pinnacle Sport Fishing and get my own boat, there was only one choice. I wanted a Parker, then there's a real good reason for it. The fishability and seaworthiness. I've been 
been fishing on Parkers for years now, and I know the abuse they can take. Park Marine builds a heavy-duty industrial-strength boat, probably overbuilt, but that's what I need when we're out 12 hours a day, over 300 days a year, running charters. The guys at West Coast Marine built me one heck of a fishing boat. From the custom tower with steering and throttle controls to the backup bait pump system, my Parker 2520XLD will deliver me to the fishing ground reliably and safe. Take it from me. If you're ready for a new Parker at a fair, upfront, honest deal, you need to see West Coast Marine located at 1555 Newport Boulevard in Costa Mesa. Or check them out and their inventory and information online at westcoastmarine.com. Cast Tours is a family owned and operated travel company that specializes in taking you to great fishing destinations. They take pride in providing the best and most affordable vacation packages available. Cast Tours has been creating unique sport fishing and vacation trips for decades. Whether it's a fishing trip or a family vacation, they will provide you the service and value you deserve. Call Cast Tours at 800 593 6510 or check casttours.com. There are plenty of boat slips and marinas in San Diego, but there's only one Kona Kai. It's not just a place to park your boat. It's a way of life here in America's finest city. The Kona Kai Resort Spa and Marina has multiple swimming pools and a private beach, waterfront restaurants, and award-winning spa, most of which is included for marina tenants. Check ResortKonaKai.com for more information. The Kona Kai Resort, much more than just a place to park your boat. When it comes to fishing rods for saltwater, there's just one name you need to know, CalSTAR. Take, for example, the Graphiter series. It's a true graphite and fiberglass composite rod, the finest that's ever been built. And for anglers seeking traditional performance, durability, and quality at an affordable price, the CalSTAR West Coast series of rods and blanks are the ones for you. Their master craftsmen bring decades of rod building experience to every rod they make. So if you want your fishing rods to be truly state-of-the-art, I always recommend CalSTAR at fine tackle stores everywhere. This is Cal- Captain Dwayne Diego, Pinnacle Sport Fishing. Visual signs are one of our most important aspects to our charter fishing business. It's the reason myself and all of our crew all wear Costa sunglasses. With advanced polarization technology, Costa is designed to help cut through the sun's glare by providing enhanced color and comfort to help you see more fish. Costa was founded over 35 years ago by a group of fishermen wanting high-performance lenses for every fishing application. Costa has a West Coast-style frame and lens for your pursuit. Check them out at costasunglasses.com. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hook Up. And again, if you want to join us, a telephone number 213-432-1090 or text us via the app. And like I mentioned, we're giving away a pair of uh, Costa sunglasses, actually $300. You can go on the website, choose your own, and we're going to flip a coin. And we're going to have Brandon flip a coin at the end of the show and decide whether that goes between the uh, texters and the callers. Yeah, if you're not familiar how we uh, how we run that killer prize, basically every phone call that gets read on, or that get uh, that makes it over the air today, and then every text that gets read on the air, those um, will pull a winner, a random winner from each of those, um, and uh, then amongst those two, Brandon will flip a coin at the end of the show. One side has the T for the texters, the other has the see for the callers and whoever that coin wins on you got yourself a brand new pair of coasters pretty Kinda slick cool. deal yeah no doubt oh, about I'd it call it slick for sure <laughs> well Corey, the, the phones are packed up let's get it started this morning all right let's do it rick how about Vinny? Vinny from uh, carlsbad good morning appreciate you joining us this morning what's up Vinny? hey good morning guys hey um question for brand hey so what's the number one thing that you always see guys walk into the tackle shop and they buy right before they go, like on a long range trip. Like, okay, man, I gotta have hooks, or is it, is it line, or what is the one thing that they always come in? What's the number one seller? I'm certainly the the two most obvious ones would be would be hooks and fluorocarbon. I, I guess those would be predominantly the the A and B sellers. But these days, uh, it's it's been. Uh, a, a steady mix of knife jigs and Shimano current snipers have been really uh, have been really flying look at, off the shelves. Look at you with the lingo. Explain what current sniper is. Current sniper is the new name for a Colt sniper, is what uh, a lure yeah. we we all have fished for now several years and been very popular and been very effective for the the tuna. But certainly in the start of this 2022 season, it's been one of the most effective ways yeah. to catch a, a local bluefin, and we're we're. Selling them like hotcakes. Uh, Colt Sniper. It, Colt Sniper, it's tough because that name that name took on, like, it, it was elevated to beyond that lure. Like, it took on the role of 
Kleenex, of totally. Xerox, like, you know, that particular brand of lure was what people described all, you know, that style of jig is referred to as a dart, you know, it's a dart style yeah. jig. So so they changed the name? So, yeah, there was a there was a very odd, you know, some small country, some somewhere uh, copyright infringement oh. type thing, okay. and uh, so a Colt Sniper is no longer called a Colt Sniper, it is current. now called a Current Sniper. Just like Rapala and Rapala, nobody's ever going to think twice. And when you come into the shop looking for a Colt sniper, somebody's going to hand you a current sniper and yeah, know yeah. And know what it is. But yeah, if uh, and the the new packaging obviously says current sniper, but in the same text and the same font and the same color and the same everything, like you you got to like look at it. And there'll be twenty packages, and you know ten of them are the old stock that say Colt, and the other ten are the new stock that say right. current. And you couldn't hardly tell the difference. But a, a good call. Um, with that, that has been the ticket. You, um, when you're going Colt Sniper, Current Sniper, whatever, is that an out of the box thing? You tricking that out? If so, what are you doing? Like, what's I'm, the I'm, what's the right rig for the guy in Vinny's case going on the boat wanting to grab the hot thing? Unfortunately, not. Uh, uh, in the package, they're not quite designed or rigged in a fashion that 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 you should be going and catching large tunas on right. them. They're they're fine if you want to go catch a rockfish, they'd be fine if you want to go catch a salmon. Uh, but for for a tuna you you need a you need a heavier split ring and a larger heavier gauge wire hook. Okay. And in the in the tackle shop we we spend a, a considerable amount of our time re rigging people's uh, any number of lures, but the current sniper is is a, is really a dominant one right now. But we put new rings and new hooks on them, and they're and they're much beefier and ready to go for the for the tuna fishing. What's your favorite method of hook on that? I'm sure single hooks, treble hooks, assist style hooks. I'm sure they all can do work. Do you got a personal favorite? What's your what, I, how would how are you re rigging your personal one if you're going tuna fishing? I definitely do. Like I, I I'm a I'm a firm believer that a treble hook on that lure gets bit better. You're gonna really? get you're gonna get you're gonna for sure you're gonna get it, in my belief and many people's beliefs, but certainly people that work on boats have seen this uh it, with the treble hook on it it tends to get bit better. Now with gets sing- bit better or it hooks the fish better. Gets bit better. Okay. Uh, with the single hook, you you will notice you tend to land more fish. You know, so I, for me, if I'm going on uh, maybe a full day boat, let's say for example on the Liberty or the, or, or the San Diego, uh, and I somehow knew I could I could prophesize that I was going to catch medium sized. Uh, tuna, or have an opportunity to catch those, like I'm, like twenty to thirty. Tw- yeah, tw- okay. twenty to fifty pounders. Okay, you know, I, I'm I'm probably going to stick with the treble hook because I want to get maximum number of bites. I, my opportunities might be might be slim and and, and might be few. I, I want to get maximum bites. I'm gonna I want to stick with that treble hook. Now, if I'm going on, let's say Rick's boat, for example, which I've done, had the fortunate pleasure of doing a lot of times, uh, and we're going to go target or or hopefully get an opportunity to catch big tuna. Uh, I'm gonna I'm going to put a big single hook on there. I prefer an owner Aki twist, and uh, that particular hook seems to cer- certainly with big fish catch them in the corner of the mouth, keep your line tie out of their mouth so they can't chew you off, and you you tend to you tend to land most bites you get. Interesting. I, I like yeah. that too. Like I, I use a very similar hook. Same, uh, you know, same thing. Different, you know, different manufacturer. I, I really like that Gamakatsu Octopus 4X hook. Same same exact thing. Totally. It's a little bit longer shank. It's a little bit more offset, uh, you know, than, than a traditional J hook. That Aki twist, basically the same thing. It, uh, it's just a little beefier. It's a little longer. It's a little bit offset, sharp, but a really good replacement. And now it. that you mentioned that, I, I I didn't think of that. The the Gamagatsu is a heavier gauge of wire, which I do like on that bigger fish. You know, it, it, not not to say either one is going to bend yeah. out on you, but the Gamagatsu is just less likely to bend. There's got to be no better feeling than having that big single hook in the corner of the mouth like the fish comes up to color and you can see that jig like in the corner of the mouth just with the chafing gear you know what i mean yeah and again to, to say all that that doesn't mean that that is the only way to go about it you know i, I roy rose came into the store after a trip a couple trips ago looking for the smallest 7691 which that's the forged you know big offshore style tuna hook like the the hook you'd put in a, a yummy flyer or the hook you'd put behind a marlin jig you know a smaller version like a a 60 size like that's that's two or three times the size of hook that that 
I would put on there, but who's going to argue with Roy Rose? Nobody. Right? The guy's the best there yet. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of ways. I've seen a lot of guys rig them with assist style hooks. Like, and that has become very popular. The 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 assist style hooks, and and I I do not think you could go wrong with your rigging. But I really like the idea of those assist hooks because it does allow the bait to kind of swing around and also with the same idea of keeping the line tie out of their mouth so you cannot get chewed off, those assist hooks are, are probably very effective. With all that said, I'm, I'm in Brandon's camp. I think a heavy-duty treble hook on that lure just flat out gets bit better. And you got to get a bite first. You know what I mean? All of it's important. There's, there's, no, there's no black or white saying like, hey, it's better to do this than that. You, you have to get a bite before you can land them, and you have to be able to land them. Otherwise, what's the point of getting a bite? So you could argue till you're blue in the face, but I'm, a, I'm the same. I'm a heavy-duty treble hook guy. Yeah, I like those things. And we do. We, we uh, at the shop, we'll spend, you know, the, it, it's kind of the, it's almost like the, <laughs> the ritual, the rite of passage, the, the new guy. You know, every, every year for summertime, we always have new additions to our crew. And often we have, uh, you know, guys, it's their first year and their summer and they're kind of green. And, you know, in the, in the nighttime when there's 100 people in there, it can be a little intimidating. And usually, you know, the, the, a lot of the time of the first guy is spent, like, re-rigging our lures. You know, we do a lot of that, whether it's knife jigs or colt snipers or whatever it might be. It's just re-rigging them ahead of time to get them dialed in because on a night shift, there might be there might be 400 people that come through looking for a re-rig jig for Brandon. So re-rigging each one of those at a time, they're flat out isn't enough time to do so. So we have a lot that are pre-done, and that's like – the the new guy gets very good with a pair of split ring pliers and a pair of hooks because we, we do an awful lot of that. Yeah, and I can only imagine that three to 400 people coming in, and it's in less than a three-hour period. I mean, that's it. probably mm. two hours, right, Brandon? Yeah, it can yeah. be very hectic. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... <laughs> it's pretty fun. Oh, it's a good time. man. Well, hey, a great call very yeah. much. Pre- appreciate it very much. With that said, talk about a spot where they're always biting. That's down at one of my most favorite places oh. in the whole world, and that's Rancho Leonero. We got John Ireland on the line. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rick. Hello, Corey, Brandon. Hey, John. Well, it's been quite a week. It's really, really improved a bunch. The fishing finally, we're, we had a real slow start this year, mostly because of colder water. The colder water just hung around and uh, hung a lot, especially uh, stayed real close to the coast. Um, but now it's changed a bunch. The water's gone uh, right in front of the hotel at 75 degrees, but south of the lighthouse and outside, it's now bumped up to 80. And, boy, has it made a big difference this week. Uh, we were out a couple times earlier in the week, and, um, and we decided there was warmer water a little outside, and and we decided to go out, and, boy, we just ran into them. It's, it's real, real fishy out there. Um, we've got a couple of nice Dorado. I think the, really the first big Dorado of the season uh, we caught a couple 35 pounders, a male and a female, one on the lure and, and the other on bait. But um, there's loads and loads of Dorado around now, you guys. Uh, uh, real good Dorado fishing. Every day it seems to get better. Uh, all the anglers are uh, limiting. I think the biggest fish this week's 45 pounds. But uh, and there's and there's a few smaller ones mixed in there. But most of them are pretty good sized fish. They're uh, they're picking them up uh, underneath the. Um, the shark boys, there's a lot of shark boys outside south in particular this year. They're picking them up under them, under the shark boys, and any any floating debris, uh, you're going to find fish underneath. So there's loads and loads of them around. Uh, like I said, the, the water uh, temperature uh, has bumped a good five degrees this week, and I think that's really, really what's helped. Lots and lots of Dorado, a really good sign for the year. It's, it's actually as good a Dorado fishing as I can recall, even even through last year. So we're real pleased about that. Outside in the warm water, mixed with the Dorado, with the Dodo, are, uh, are lots of striped marlin. Gosh, loads of them. You know, we baited eight and uh, and actually released three, and we could have stayed out there all day long <laughs> catching striped marlin. Loads of striped marlin around and uh, and some big fish, too. The, the one we released, probably about 175 pounds, some good-sized fish. Um, the the pompano still really going on in a big way, African pompano, right down on the park border, Pomo Park line there. Um, live sardine, people are drifting with the live sardine and uh, and picking up a nice pompano. Everybody's limiting on the pompano. Biggest fish is about eight pounds, but that's a big pompano. Uh, really, really good eating. Everybody's eating pompano at the hotel every evening. And loads of them around. 
a couple nice grouper too. We had a couple grouper in the 30 to 35 pound range, um, taking off the bottom on chunk uh, skipjack. That's working real well. And rooster fish, rooster fish are loads and loads and loads of peanuts, so little guys, right? One, two, three pounders right around the marine entrance, uh, just loads of them, mixed with a few 10 to 20 pounders. Uh, but it bodes well for this coming season. There's just uh, gobs of them around, so we expect it to be a pretty good uh, rooster fish year too. If you Overall, go down, uh, I was gonna say, if you go down there with like a a bass rod and you know like something that you would fish calico bass with, and are down at that marina when all those little those little guyos are down there, that is the most fun fishing. They'll bite a sardina instantly, but they'll bite a leadhead and a swim bait pretty good, especially when those things are fired up, and it's. You know, it's like it's like bass fishing. It's like calico bass fishing, but uh, you know, those little roosters are just zipping all over the place, and their combs are out of the water as they're trying to chase down your little plastic or that your little bait. So cool. It is so, cool. so much fun. You know, the the draw, John, as always, you know, is the big fifty pound giant rooster that you see. But like fishing those things on appropriate tackle, as if you would bass fishing, that is some of the most fun fishing. I I dig it when those little things are are in there, especially in the volume that you're talking about. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's loads of them around. You can't believe how many of them there are. Uh, the fly fishermen are just loving it. They're picking up bunches of them. You know, I don't know how many they're releasing in a day, but uh, just there's there's a quite a few, as many as I can recall. So it's looking good. They're going to grow and get bigger. We dig it, John. Yeah, Sounds like some <clears throat> some great fishing. Glad to hear that the water turned on and activated the fishing for you guys. If somebody wants to get in, is there still opportunity to come, uh, you know, in kind of this early transitioning into primetime season? Absolutely, yeah. Pretty much all season long we have rooms available, and uh, fishing is definitely improving, Rick. So it's worthwhile coming down. 800 Six four six two two five two or ranchalandarrow.com. And we're posting some nice photos of some of these Product. Nice dodos for sure. Yeah. I dig it, man. That's awesome. Well, John, great report as always. Appreciate it. Can't wait to get back down to the ranch. Oh, can't wait to see you, Rick. Thank Thanks. you, gentlemen. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. Great report. Hey, want to remind you, a really fun event coming up Saturday, May the 7th. It's the 52nd annual Southwestern Yacht Club Bottom Fishing Tournament. This is, a, I mean, think about that. 52 That's years wow. this tournament has been going on. And, and it's because it's such a fun one. It's, uh, you know, the money they raise goes to um, help a great charity and, and elder support. It has a complimentary breakfast afterwards. So it's really fun. Like, you basically get there in the morning. The normal tournament is the shotgun start and everybody's freaked out and they go like totally the opposite this is mellow it's low key it's a really good time everybody has breakfast together in the morning and then the boats all take off after that at the end of it they do a world famous fish taco dinner some of the cods get donated for some of the guys and they make killer fish tacos for everybody that night there is literally thousands of dollars in raffle prizes. They have auctions. Um, I mean, there's for real cash awards. There's juniors and small fry awards and boat awards. It's just a really, really fun, well-run tournament, and and it wouldn't be around for 52 years if it wasn't that popular. It's a really, really good time. Um, if you want to get more information, uh, check out Southwestern Yacht Club. Their website is southwesternyc.org, and uh, you can get all the info there. But a really, really fun tournament. Again, it's Saturday, May the seventh if you want something fun to do that's low-key and a good time totally totally recommend it really fun group to to get with the guys you get the the fun of being in the tournament without all the you know the craziness that that often goes along with it next saturday yeah pretty cool well Corey, let's jump back into the phones let's do it how about uh dan dan calling from mission bay good morning dan welcome to the show hey dan hey how are you good morning good morning hey so i have to tell you a story about brandon so Corey, you know, I went on the trip with you down to El Salto. Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't didn't know what to take. So Ricky says, Dan, talk to Brandon. <laughs> so I called Brandon. Brandon came to my house, and we got <laughs> online. Tackle Warehouse, and let's just put it this way. I needed to use Brandon's credit card to pay for the stuff he wanted me to get. <laughs> but but uh, that's, that's the kind of guy Brandon is. So, And the well, same we, with we, Rick and the same with you, Corey. Oh, yeah, that's cool, Dan. And, you know, Castman puts together such cool trips down there. And for all of us to get together and go have a good time and for you to have Brandon to kind of point you and show you the right way and – 
we are a full service tackle shop. Right? But I, I will I will mention that it has been very rare in my career that, that I ever made a house call. You know, but when when the occasion strikes that I actually go to somebody's house or, or or go beyond my means to help somebody get rigged up for a place or to do a thing. It's almost always El Salto. El Salto is just a, is just a special place in my heart. Maybe my arguably my favorite place to go to or or certainly one of them. And when somebody starts talking to me about going to El Salto, I get just so yeah, fired nice. up. Yeah. I'm ready to go today, tonight. Let's go. You know, and and if they need help outfitting themselves to go there to to get tackle rods reels whatever they may need it, i'm i'm always game to help them always 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 people come in uh we're a saltwater shop we do not sell freshwater tackle sure there's plenty of crossover stuff but that's not our deal but people come in all the time whether it be uh you know somebody like somebody who's like me i'm a saltwater guy but i love going to el salto one of my most favorite things pete's the same way uh you know Corey, you're the same way like you know the salt water is your background el salto is just it's really, really fun. And anytime somebody comes in asking me questions, I, I just refer him to Brandon. Like that is his, he is an expert when it comes to that. You know, I, I enjoy going down there. He's an expert at it, but I will always give them the caution. He's really into it. And Brandon does not want to be ill prepared for any scenario that may happen down there. And you, you guys could chime in on this better. You could go to El Salto with a bag of lizards a bag of Sankos and a handful of hooks and catch fish the entire time. The and entire you, time. And you could go with that. You could go with two rods and those two baits and catch fish the entire time. But Rick, I have never once thrown a lizard or a Sanko the yeah. entire time. Yeah. Same. You know? you, Same. You, yeah. you Not one time ever. You couldn't pick a lamer way to catch them at the <laughs> coolest place. It was it's I mean yeah, no no doubt. You could you could yeah. go with lizards and Sankos and, and catch plenty of fish and, and just have steady. Not action. just plenty, a ton. Like yeah. you if you fished yeah. that, you would catch a ton. No doubt, but, but there is but there is but. infinite cool ways to catch them, <laughs> and the fish at El Salto are very particular in in certain things that they like, certain uh, speeds, weights, what it, what have you, and they and you may go down there, and it could be one of ten thousand things that 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 they are biting at that particular time, and if you don't have one of those ten thousand things, you are going to be bummed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're gonna you watch your buddy catch them. Exactly. Em. Yeah. You, you'll be humbled. Yeah, yeah, and, and, it, and it can be a humbling place too, man. Like, yeah. talk about a thing that's a controlled, captured body of water, and you're fishing a relative same zone, and Brandon and Corey roll through there and just knock the daylights out of them, and in and then the next group goes through without the little tweak, twist, you know, killer MC weedless, whatever that thing happens to be. And boy, they don't they don't want it. And you know that that place is it, it, it's an exotic and it's a it's a bucket list. Certainly was for me a bucket list trip place. But it's a heavily pressured fishery. It's like any other fishery when uh, it has ups and downs and cycles. And it sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not as great as it could be. Yeah. You know, and and uh, we've had trips down there, Corey and I, for example, like where we're fishing the correct lure. Just maybe not at the right speed, maybe not with the right weight. There was one time we were down there, I was, and they were. I'm thinking of this exact one. They, I mean, they, we, we had been fishing his five inch weedless bait and catching fish, having but, a time of our life, yeah, really, we're having a great time, but not, not smashing them, you know, not, 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 not crushing them, but, ke- but, but catching but them, but getting them plenty good enough, plenty good enough. And he, he gave, he happened to just so happened to give a handful to, to a, a father and son, to a, to a father and son that were there from like North Carolina or somewhere. yeah, they're either yeah. from Northern California or something yeah. like that. And and those guys went out and had like two over nine and like an eight on their first wow. day of fishing. It. They came back like high five in us, like thank you. We had the time of our life, one of our best afternoons. And Brandon and I look at each other. I mean, we had fun. A oh, lot no of doubt. threes and fives yeah. Yeah. and maybe a seven. But you wanted some of that action. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but then and when we asked them, what, well, what the heck were you doing? How, how were you fishing? Oh, we were fishing a heavier weight, and we were slow rolling it on bottom way off the bank. And so that next morning session, him and I went out, and that's exactly what we did. We caught nothing but big ones. But, I but mean, good ones. Big yeah. ones. And what a trip that is. In the yeah. same area, in the same lake, even the same lure mm. just fished yeah. a little differently. Literally, 
Really? And, I mean, and, I bring, seriously, you would laugh. I bring like two colors. Okay. I, when you, the guy like, that has hey, unlimited resources. No. Seriously, <laughs> you want to talk about having maybe, access to every MC made, you make them all. Like. You know, maybe three. Seriously. <laughs> you know, more likely two. And that's because, I, like I say on here and I say to my friend, it's, it's 90% of it's the reaction. Yeah. 90% mm. of it is drawing the reaction. The color is so secondary. It's, yeah. it's, so serious it's i bring two colors that's awesome you know? like a lighter and a clearer and that that's it that's it it's yeah. all about the wiggle yeah but to have that father and son come back and like educate myself and educate brandon it's kind uh, of an eye opener that was such a cool experience yeah. i am I'm, yeah it, it was uh it was really cool to see Corey Corey introduce a person to a lure give that lure to him and say hey go try this out and then them completely revolutionized their own bass fishing <laughs> yeah. in just one day of attempting it. How know? about a day of two nines and an eight? And oh. I said, like, how about that? Right. Oh. At that point during the trip, we, him and I had been there for days and we, we didn't have a nine pounder, you know, no. to the, to that point, you know, and if they hadn't clued us in on that one little detail, like I'll go heavier, go slower. We would have never maybe tried that. And it just changed the, the course of our trip. And, right. and really like slow rolling and 12 feet of water is yeah. nothing cooler than coming through the trees weedless. And, and you think you're on a stick and you pull up a little bit and you get your, your, your rod yanked from you, oh, you know, so and it's cool. just like, don't, those you know, just like those bites. Those, are the bites. those were the bites. Yeah, oh, that, that was man. that was some such fun fishing. Those were the most aggressive bites by some of the biggest bass that the lake had to offer at the time. So really, that, really good time. So that's cooler than a lizard. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. All right, hey, we're gonna be right back. More from Brandon. Everything from bluefin yellows all the way to the lake. When we're gonna turn on a let's talk hook about the mightier 1090 ESPN radio. Are you passionate about fishing and the great outdoors, but not quite sure where to go? Look no further than Queen Charlotte Safaris in pristine British Columbia, Canada. Hello, this is Valerie Hopridge. There's so many reasons to join us on your next fishing adventure. A few of the highlights are fishing in protected, calm waters. Very important. Quality Chinook salmon run all season long. No down time. This is migrating salmon going through our fishing grounds. After you've caught your salmon, we're going to go out for the great Pacific halibut, lean cod, rockfish, and dungeness crab. Our beautiful lodge overlooks Shingle Bay and Sandspit, and it's so easy to get to. Fly from almost any airport into Vancouver and then on to Sandspit. Our trips are five days, four nights. Custom fish processing, your fishing license, your gear, all included. Just bring that fishing arm and that smile. Let our chef pamper you with amazing meals while our staff gives you wonderful hospitality, all included in your Queen Charlotte Safaris package. We are booking for 2022 now, and the trips are filling up quickly. So give me a call on our toll-free number, 1-877-815-2892, or go to our website, qcsafaris.com. All right, it's time to talk about great gear from Shimano. And boy, we're talking about gear and have the guy that's behind the counter all the time. Uh, speaking of Shimano, speaking of great gear, speaking of what's going on right now, there's wide open bluefin fishing, it's knife jig, it's colt sniper, what are you picking? What's coming out of the case? What's going right now? If I'm hopping on board a overnight trip, a day and a half trip, I'm going to an efficient. What am, what are you what are you picking? If we're talking about a reel, I, I, uh -huh. I right now I would pick either a, a Shimano Talica 16 two speed or a Shimano Talica 20 two speed. Those would be my two primo a number one choices uh you couldn't go wrong the 20 would be to fish my 80 pound test and the yeah. 16 would be to fish my 40 to 60 pound test smooth tons of power two speed especially for what's going on right this second and what what has happened in the last couple of days is we're starting to see an influx of that big fish that we had you know in the last uh, at last season so most of the fish right now is 25 to 60 pounds a lot of them are those 30 and 40 pounders easily handled by whatever you got but every boat uh, the last couple nights has had a 100, a 150, a 160, a 180. There's a couple of cows caught. And where those two reels that Brandon's talking about really shine is when you hook the wrong fish, but you still have the right reel in your hand, you, you still, you're still you still in the driver's seat when you got a Talica. Fishing tackle is just like anything else in the world. You you get what you pay for. And the best in the game is is probably a, a Shimano Talica two-speed. That, that's the best we have to offer. You heard it there. For more information, check out fishshimano.com or your local Shimano dealer. 
The name that stands out among anglers is Fisherman's Landing, your top choice in local and long-range fishing. Hi, this is Doug Kern. Our hardworking crew will make sure your fishing experience is one to remember. We offer the finest open party trips from one to three days, the best charter boats available, and of course, our world-renowned long-range fleet is second to none. Fisherman's Landing is a full-service operation offering great half-day trips on the Dolphin and full-day open party trips on the spacious and comfortable Liberty. Since we introduced the full-day trips at Fisherman's Landing, the 85-foot Liberty has become a favorite among full-day operations with bunks for your comfort, huge bait capacity, and RSW fish holds to keep your catch fresh. Plus, Liberty has a big modern galley and two interior heads with showers. All our open party trips from half-day, full, or one- to three-day trips can easily be booked online at Fisherman'sLanding.com or give us a call at 619-221-8500. I'll see you at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. When you want to catch big bluefin tuna, you need Shimano. Hi, this is Doug Kern from Fisherman's Landing Tackle, the saltwater tackle professionals. The Shimano Beastmaster is the pinnacle of electric reels. Shimano's Gigamax motor packs a winding strength up to 250 pounds, ideal for kite fishing and more. Shimano's butterfly flat fall jigs are irresistible to bluefin tuna because they stay in the strike zone longer. Shimano makes a complete line of butterfly flat fall jigs to target your favorite game fish. For all your Shimano needs, visit us at Fisherman's Landing Tackle at Fisherman's Landing in San Diego. All right, welcome back to Let's Talk Hookup. Man, we are having so much fun in studio, and it's the reason why the lines are so packed. But when somebody does hang up, actually, I think one line just did open uh, at 213-432-1090, or you can text us via the app. We did open, and then Don grabbed it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's, back to, it's back to full again. But there's, <laughs> there's a lot of time over an hour for your phone calls. We'll look forward to hearing from you. And, hey, with that said, it's time to find out what's biting. It's time for our catch report. Hey, top anglers know the best hooks are made by Gamakatsu. But did you know that Gamakatsu also makes makes great tackle storage solutions like the G-Box 3200, the reversible utility case. It's for easy, tangle-free jig storage. Gamakatsu also makes killer lead heads. They've got a line of fishing pliers, clothing, and more. A complete lineup. Check Gamakatsu.com or check your local Gamakatsu tackle dealer. Hey, we're going to head all the way up to the Sierra as a bonus to our catch report. We have Ken Harrison on the line with our Sierra catch report. Good morning, Ken. Oh, man. Hey, guys. Boy, great to hear from you. We're uh, we're a little jealous that you're up there in the in the zone that I know everybody'd like to be for the uh, the opening of the mammoth trout season. How'd it go, Ken? Yeah. Oh, hey, listen. The key word was weather. We had the best weather we've had in five years. It was beautiful. No wind. Sunny skies. Uh, high fifties, low sixties. The fishing, on the other hand, I think they need to wake up a little bit. There are a lot of big ones caught out. Yeah, the winner of the Monster Trout Contest at June Lake was uh, eight pounds six ounces, coming out of Gull Lake. Uh, Gull Lake one? continues to yeah, Gull Lake continues to produce the uh, the monster trout up there in in June Lake. Um, and last minute, uh, Friday night, late Friday afternoon at four p.m., Caltrans decided to open the gate going up Tioga Pass. Now, the lakes up top were all frozen over, but what that meant was is that Levining Creek was wide open and well-stocked, well-produced uh, all day long yesterday. Uh, Mammoth Basin was not open. It usually doesn't open by the opener. It's, it's still got a lot of ice, and the campgrounds aren't open, but uh, we heard good reports from Crawley, from Convict. Oh, and Bishop Creek. Uh, Bishop Creek produced very, very well. It was extremely well-stocked by the Bishop Chamber of Commerce and by Fish and Wildlife. Just uh, just the perfect, perfect day for the thousands of us that are here uh, every opening. And Merry Fishmas is what we say up here. Merry <laughs> Fishmas. Is, is there a more picturesque, beautiful area to fish than those lakes and creeks going up Tioga Pass? Like, I mean, does it is, is there a place on earth that looks cooler than it does up there in that high elevation stuff? Well, not really. Uh, you know, if you can fish El Rey and Tioga at the very top in the summertime, those are just absolutely you know, just stunning. But there's, with the exception of Crawley Lake, but people love Crawley Lake. I don't care for it. But, you know, people love Crawley Lake because it's just a good, good fishery. But there's no trees. There's no mountains. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, June Lake Loop is gorgeous. Bishop Creek, Bridgeport uh, produced well. You know, Bridgeport fishermen are a little different. I don't know if you know this. They're not going for fish. They're going for one fish. Because, you know, Bridge, the, Bridge, the, the Twin Lakes has the record brown trout uh, from – I think 1958 or something, you know, so everybody that goes out there, the old guys, they're going for that one 
fish to break to break that record. And we know it's out there. But anyway, just a, just to recap, it's a, it was just a great, great week. And people haven't seen each other in like three years. Uh, the merchants coming out, uh, you know, the Berkeley guys were all up and down the range uh, helping people out. So it was just a great great and it's going to continue today good great, great awesome. weather today as well yeah, yeah it was absolutely. A, we talked about it at the beginning of the show it was a well-deserved win for the people of mammoth and 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 bishop and bridgeport and everywhere up there between covid and fires and everything else we were just due for a weather and an opener like this and like you say the fishing the fishing can be better here or there but i mean let's face it that's not that's not what this is about it's it's getting together in beautiful country enjoying some great fishing catching some fish seeing some buds and it's sounds like that was it sounds like that part of it was full speed it, it sure was and as this, a guy told me a long long time ago sitting there as i was yelling at the wind and not able to cast out he said look around where you are look where you are you know these incredible mountains and the incredible eastern sierra and that's you know that's that's the key it's the destination it's not how many fish you're bringing back or whatever it's the destination and the camaraderie and being being we all a lot of us call this uh you know this is this is where we want to end up someday with whether whether it's in a box or whether it's with a pole in our hand. We all, well, want, all want to end up, yeah. Well said, Ken. Well, a great report. Glad to hear there's some great fishing going on up there. Glad to hear Gull Lake kicked out that big eight pounder, and uh, we appreciate you keeping us informed. And man, if uh, if they if that fishing continues to turn on, you're going to have to shoot us another report. Keep us in the loop. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks, guys. Sure, appreciate it. Ken, great job. Appreciate that very much. Uh, let's continue yeah. with our catch report, and we're going to head up to Dana War Sport Fishing. Talk to the man, Captain Brian Woolley's on the line. What's up, Woolley? Bass capital of the West. Can't wait to hear it. What's up, guys? How are you this morning? Yeah, good How you doing, morning. Willie? Good. Doing well, man. Hey, things shaped up quick. I know we were like doom and gloom last week, but uh, we saw some nice improvements across uh, the board this week. You know, with our water temps, I'm starting with that, 60 to 61 this week through our stretch. So that's a huge improvement from that 53 that we had over the weekend last weekend. So that really helped revive that bass fishing for our half-day guys. Uh, we also had a nice load of anchovy filler receivers, too. So you can imagine, you know, that over 60-degree water and some of that anchovy, that certainly helped uh, with that bass. Uh, sliding egg sinkers, real light, quarter ounce, uh, were the best way to fish that anchovy yesterday. Some nice sand bass and sheephead for those guys fishing the bottom on the dropper loop setups. And still uh, still some lingering areas of red tide below Dana Point Harbor and through uh, San Clemente, but... Uh, it's been dissipating pretty quick, so we're stoked to see that stuff kind of starting to phase itself out. Uh, Three-quarter day right now, you know, we're still out there fishing that rockfish. That an- that anchovy did help out in that sector, too, yesterday with some uh, nice improvements through those counts. You know, also that raging current that I've been talking about the last couple of weeks, that stuff, too, has uh, backed off substantially and allowed us to, uh, you know, fish the anchor in a much uh, more controlled way than uh, things have been with that just that ripping current so but improved counts there on the reds white fish plenty of other mixed rock fish going in the bags for those guys and then the fury over at clemente you know he didn't waste any time finding that yellow tail over there you know as is the case down there at the coronado is the same deal at san clemente island you know they see the fish but the commitment you know the commitment mode of those fish sometimes takes a few days so there's a handful of schools that they were seeing over there and that fish that they did catch on it they caught a handful uh Day before yesterday, I was like 15 to 25 pound fish, but uh, those schools that are roaming around, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before we see a good hit on that stuff. But with that, the rockfish over there is still good. Great bass action in the kelp, some good hits on the bonito there, and tons of uh, whitefish made up their uh, overnight counts uh, over there at uh, Clemente. So that was our week. You know, some steps in the right direction, which is certainly a good deal uh, in May. You know, typically is a fun month as we transition into a warmer water and a better condition set. So if you guys want to hop on a trip with us here, our number 949-496-794. Of course, you can hit us there at danawarf.com or link us right there through the Let's Talk Hookup page, and I can book online from there. Awesome. Certainly some good fishing. Really glad to hear about those improved conditions, Willie. And, you know, we got a little day of a, a little bit of wind here today, but, boy, we got really nice-looking conditions going forward. Just uh, glad to hear things are on the rise and already kicking out fish. I can only imagine what we're going to be talking about next weekend. We're hoping for it, so we'll see what happens this week. Awesome. Great job, buddy. Appreciate that. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you then. All right, boys. Thanks. Later. Thanks, see ya. thanks Willie. Appreciate it. All right. Hey, we've got our surf guru, Mr. Gundy Gunderson, my favorite report of the week. Good morning, Gundy. What's up, What's Gundy? What's going on, guys? We're It'd be it. nice to Lake Crowley. 
<laughs> I know it ain't a looker, but I, I, damn, I've had some great fall fishing on that lake. Crowley is so funny. I, I loved it. Ken's like, oh, it's not my favorite, but you know, whatever. Like Crowley is for those that don't know that that whole Eastern Sierra, it is, it is like the most beautiful place you could go fishing anywhere. It's just, and it has, it's got everything. It's the big trees. It's the creeks. It's the lakes. It's the pictures. Crowley is like, it's like a mud puddle. Like, there's no trees around at all. <laughs> right? it, I mean, there's no trees whatsoever. It's slow sloping. It's just, it is not, like, it is the most unpicturesque per- place in the most beautiful area everywhere, but it kicks out. <laughs> it kicks out so much better than anywhere else up there. Big fish, lots of them, big numbers. It's got everything. It's got rainbows and browns and cutthroats. It's got, it's got like, it, I mean, it has, uh, arguably, it has the very best fishing but it's just like well what, what why what that's not fair you know i mean it's just yeah it was yeah. i just i thought ken was so funny he was like well it's not my favorite spot but you know you you can't deny how good the fishing is at crowley like that's the spot like if you want to catch Absolutely. if you want to catch big ones and you want to catch numbers of big ones there's nowhere better than that like it's it's the zone it is it is it is it's uh the uh unwanted stepsister i guess of the <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> well anyways hey we got uh kind of the tale of two cities you know willie mentioned it that red tide was a problem on the southern beaches it's dissipating as we get into the weekend so a lot of guys had to go inside and fish the bays and you know uh keep going on that halibut fight that's been good but on the northern front it looks like the bark perch have finally gone into the spawning mode And uh, it's kind of interesting, you know, in many years past, that spawn would start in late March, you know, but it just seems over the years we get later, and now we're finally seeing ripe fish up there. We're seeing some two-pound class fish. And interestingly enough, uh, the meat of the barred perch spawn this year seems to be up towards Morro Bay and stuff. So it's a little northward shift, maybe because of the warmer water, the trend of more warmer water. I don't know, but we'll just see how it plays out. So like I said, on the northern front, barred perch bite was solid. Uh, on the southern front, we had to do a little bit of that red tide. Hook line sinker reported excellent barred perch fishing. Lots of fish on most of the beaches there. Out west, Gaviota, Refugio, El Capitan have been kicking out quality fish. Good catch- catches were also reported from East Beach, Graveyards, Henry's, Carpinteria, all manner of baits working. Sand crabs are showing pretty good down there, and you might have to dig for them, and the guys said they're finding them near structure or jetty, but they're nice nugget crabs, and uh, those big perch are taking them. Uh, grubs, gulp sandworms, mussel, lugworms, bloodworms, all that stuff also working. And uh, there was a 17-and-a-half-inch corbina taken up there by one of the perch guys on a sand crab. That's kind of interesting. Wiley's reported good barred perch fishing. Uh, Ventura Oxnard beaches, finally seeing the spawning fish. Some of the traditional big fish spots are producing like Silver Strand, Fifth Street, Santa Claus Lane. Uh, they've been holding some nice fish. And like I said, there's been some fish at the two-pound mark, a little bit over there. So that's what we like to see, some of those those better hens. And like I said, some good reports up there off Pismo Beach for barred perch. Um Let's see, just fishing reported good halibut action off Torrance Beach there. Uh, Lots of bait outside. Slow-rolled crocodiles, one of the favorite uh, tactics there, and that's been working with the guys. And then, like I said, as we moved down south from Dana Point South, there was just lots of streaky uh, red tide kind of water with that temperature dump, and then you get sun on it, and then you get that bloom. But I think we're moving past it. And there were some catches in in, in the lagoons, in Oceanside Harbor, but definitely the bite was a little bit off that way. So I would just say that let's just watch these tides this week, and I think we'll get a bounce back on those San Diego beaches. <clears throat> Man, such a complete report, Gundy. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear about that great fishing up north. And like you say, with the improving conditions, I think we'll have improving fishing for the guys fishing the surf to the south here. Great report, as always, buddy. Yeah, we're getting into May. It's it's going to be uh, it's a good time. We're heading to summer. We dig it right on. All right, gentlemen, good show. Always a pleasure. Thanks, buddy. We'll talk to you next Sunday. Leave my Crowley alone. (laughs) (laughs) See you, Gundy. Oh, spring's here, and it's time to hit the beach. For all your surf fishing needs, check out surffishtackle.com. Also, CCA California and Bill Varney uh, teaming up again this summer for several uh, 
<clears throat> on the on the beach surf fishing clinics and uh, you can find all those details at fishthesurf.com certainly a really cool thing that those guys do basically i mean it's exactly that it's a it's a seminar while you're surf fishing so you'll get all the info how you do it how you dig sand crabs how you bait them like all all this trick stuff and then you fish you know with that knowledge and the guys kind of helping you tweak your game it's a it, they do a really really good job and actually be on the beach with the man himself yeah no doubt Mr. It. Bill the man Bunny. that wrote the book right exactly hey we're gonna be right Right back more from Brandon from Fisherman's Landing Tackle. When we return on the Let's Talk Hook Up After Mighty or 1090 ESPN Radio. Here's John Ireland for Rancho Leonero. You know, the ranch is unique. It's one of the few places in the world where you can still drive ATVs up the beach. We have fishing from the beach. We have dive trips that we run to Pomo in a number of different spots. Kayaking, of course, has been real big. We were one of the first hotels to introduce kayaking. The ranch is small, you know, it's intimate, it's 34 rooms, so everyone gets to know everyone. The old saying where everyone knows your name, well, truly at Ranch Lanero, the employees do know pretty darn near all our guests' names. And what's even more interesting is most of the guests know each other's names. Very personal, very intimate, and a special, special environment. Two miles of beachfront, a mile on either side of the hotel. Ranch Lanero is really the last of the old-style Baja fishing resorts. 1-800-646-646. Two two five two, twenty eight hundred six four six Baja, and RanchoLandero.com. I'll personally guarantee your best fishing experience and vacation at Rancho Landero. Great fishing is what Seaforth Sports Fishing in Mission Bay is all about. With free parking and fully stocked tackle shop, Seaforth Sport Fishing is a favorite among anglers. Come aboard top boats like the Aztec, Cortez, Endeavor, Apollo, Outer Limits, Elgato Doe, Pride, Polaris Supreme, Tribute, Pacifica, the Pacific Voyager, and the Voyager. Plus, the new Seaforth Sea Watch in San Diego offer the finest half and full day trips available. Seaforth Sport Fishing. For charters or schedule, check SeaforthLanding.com. Run by fishermen for fishermen in Mission Bay. The future comes standard at your San Diego County Ford dealers, so swing on by and check out the legendary Ford F-150, the smart and capable Ford Ranger, and the all-new Ford Bronco Sport. New inventory is arriving daily, and your San Diego County Ford dealer is here to help you build and order the truck or SUV of your dreams. Want to make sure you get the right truck to tow your boat? They'll help you order the right configuration to meet your needs. Want to make sure you get the right SUV to haul your gear on your next adventure? They've got you covered there, too. Escape, Edge, Bronco Sport, Explorer, and Expedition. They've got the SUV that's perfect for you. If it isn't on the lot, they'll order it and get you exactly what you need. They want your trade. So swing by your nearest San Diego County Ford dealer or visit buyfordnow.com to see all the great deals. They'll be glad to hook you up. One of the dream trips for most anglers is Alaska. There are so many lodges, how do you make a choice? It's easy. Choose the one most Let's Talk Hookup listeners return to time after time. Kingfisher Charters in Sitka, Alaska. No one does it better than Kingfisher Charters. They offer the best service, the most comfortable accommodations, fantastic food, and the finest charter captains in Sitka. All for the ultimate value. One visit and you will understand why nobody beats Kingfisher Charters. Sitka is famous for some of the best runs of salmon in Alaska. And if giant Alaska... Alaskan halibut is your target. The expert captains at Kingfisher Charters know the hot spots and can put you on a fish of a lifetime. Plenty of rockfish and huge lingcod are there too. And when it comes to fish processing, the best in Alaska is Kingfisher Charters. It's all included in your package. In fact, everything is included except tips. It is truly amazing how the Kingfisher crew continues the quality of service they deliver year after year. Kingfisher Charters, 800-727-6136 or check kingfishercharters.com. 